must have experienced this uh, tendency of the mind to repeat endlessly the negativity. It does not matter if you have total knowledge. It does not matter if you have realized the self. The mind refuses to accept the superiority of the self. It keeps doing job of repeating the old things and cooking up new scenarios, imaginations that are also mostly negative. We call it worry. It does not stop. No matter how aware you are, no matter how intensely you focus on this mind, its tendency is to fall back to a repetitive pattern. Most of the time, the activity of the mind is negative and it slides into the pits of anger or hate or jealousy or pride or lust. It is as if it is spoiled through many, many years of habitual activity. So why does the mind do that? If I am awareness, shouldn't the awareness be in charge? I am consciousness, then this activity should stop by itself whenever I wish it to stop. And it should start only if I want it to start. Why doesn't that happen? Why is this misery making machine still running? You must have wondered about this thing and you must have tried to use a few tricks here and there to have a complete control over the mind. It mostly fails. This is also my experience. Nothing really works when it comes to taming the mind. Let us explore why this is and let us discuss some ways in which this can be minimized. It is kind of very difficult to have a complete control over the mind. So why is the mind doing it? This is the first question. and. The reason is very simple. The mind thinks that which is already impressed upon it, which is already in its memory. It simply recycles it back. That is what we know as the activity of thinking. There can be more aspects to thinking, such as imagination, that is projecting into future and so on. There can be emotional uh, reactions to whatever thinking is going on, whatever memory recall is going on. Life means experiences and experiences are continuously being impressed upon the memory. There is uh, actually no forgetting of any of the experience. The recall is selective, but recording is indiscriminate. It, it, it is a lossless recording. Nothing is left, especially the things that are more important to life, survival. They are recorded in a special place. This is called the waking memory. Although memory is one uniform uh, space, metaphysical space, but uh, there is a specific kind of area in that memory where these 
very important experiences are being stored in that area is usually i call it the waking memory all that's not so true but that that is all we can access in the waking state that's why we call it the waking memory and experiences of our daily concern mostly related to survival are getting stored there and when the mind has nothing to do when the when there is no immediate question of survival or entertainment then the memories they activate and they are actually played back this is a very automated mechanism in the mind it's a process in the mind and it is impossible to stop it people won't believe me if i say that it is impossible this is something very basic nature of the mind that when it is not experiencing anything important it will start experiencing the memories it will repeat them the reason is the mind is structured like this <laughs> if you want to stop this activity you will need to actually destroy a big part of the mind then it won't remain this human mind that you call as me there is another interesting uh, aspect of this recall that that which is very very important for survival gets the priority because survival related memory it's very important mechanism it helps in survival so and most naturally that which is a threat to survival that which has caused pain or danger or it has been a disadvantage in survival some fight some insult rejection by the mates potential mates and fears i may not get anything to eat tomorrow and so on these fears they are the first in the line to be recycled back into the awareness we are made aware of them again and again and again and so because of these natural mechanisms the mind creates misery even though the current experience is uh, totally peaceful there is nothing to worry there is nothing to do regarding the current experience but it continues it uh, keeps vomiting these experiences yes we do not like it even the mind itself does not like it produce a negative emotion and then gets disgusted at itself what is thinking so it is a really very complicated thing you must be wondering why it can't re- recall all those happy moments and it does and it actually twists them into negativity for example you had a great time with your partner or somebody your husband or wife it recalls that time and adds a hope in front of it what is that hope it is an expectation that i want this to happen again it was not good enough next time it needs to be better or it adds a fear what if i don't get that kind of treatment again what if i am unable to enjoy that in future what if my partner leaves me what if what if my husband dies he drives very fast these days he drinks and drives it will add something as a tail to those happy memories because these are past memories and it's, it's not happening now so it adds self pity as soon as it recalls something happy and to look i was very happy i'm not getting that kind of experience now this is like coloring the happy memories with sadness because presently it is not able to 
have those kinds of experiences. So people recall their childhood memories, recall their happy memories, honeymoon memories, and then they become sad. The happy memories, well, they are going to make you happy only for a few seconds. And then the negativity is injected into those recalls. It rarely happens. It happens sometimes that people get motivated when somebody remembers his last success. He or she may get motivated to do something bigger and better. It's kind of very rare. These individuals, we call them optimistic. They are very rare. Even there is a fear, there is a kind of clinging to the past experiences when it is recalled in case of optimism also. So most of the time, the mind simply converts everything into trash, everything into very negative, dark emotion of some kind. If it happens every day, if it cannot be stopped, then it is called depression. Because this affects other processes in the mind, and the mind says, I need to solve this first, I will not do anything else unless I find a solution to this. And of course, what can you find? How can you solve the past? It's not possible. So it enters a lethargic kind of state. It does not want to do anything good. It simply wants to sit and recall it again and again and again till it dies. There is, there is hardly any intelligence there in these processes. I was talking to somebody and she said, why does the mind like? The mind loves to create negativity. It does look like that. It is its favorite activity, but no, it is a very natural thing for the mind to do. It does not do it because it likes it. Or <laughs> there is uh, not much preference here. There is no freedom here. Some people are so tired of this activity that they say, "If why do I keep doing this? Why can't I stop this? And if, even if I stop it, it starts again. I have resolved this. This is my New Year resolution. I am not going to think negative again. And it lasts for five minutes before it starts again. So people have this kind of complaint that I can't stop it. Why keep thinking like this? So the first thing to notice is that uh, it is not you. It is the mind. And not even the mind. The mind is a very big thing. It is a tiny activity of the mind. In the waking state, it has assumed an importance due to survival being the main concern of the mind. Survival. That is the reason. We are evolved to favor negativity. Negative memories, negative thoughts, negative situations. You see, nobody cares if something good happens around them, but if somebody gets murdered or some robbery happens around, the mind goes on a red alert. Everybody wants to know why this happened and what is happening now. Or a death happens. That is kind of eye-opening, springs into life. Even the most depressed person <laughs> will want to know how did that person die? Because death, the antithesis of survival. So we should first separate the I from the mind, the mind from this process, very mechanical process. And this is the good news that uh, this alone can bring a little bit of peace in the mind. This is also conditioning. It's not um, awareness thing. So 
make it a habit to label the negative thoughts, the repetitive activity of the mind, imagery of the mind as something else, an experience that is happening besides you, in front of you, away from you. It is kind of installing another program in the mind, another process in the mind that uh, follows this uh, automated process. Initially, you will need to make some effort to remind yourself and think like this because it's not your habit. And if, slowly, with time, it should become a habit that whenever the mind throws up something which is fearful, uh, fear, uh, full of anger, worries and so on, you can remember that this is mine, this is a process, this is survival related, this is automated, it's not me. And this alone can give you a place to stand on, that, that you are standing far away from these activities. As soon as you identify with that, as soon as you say, no, the, this is me, <laughs> and I am suffering. So then there is no hope. Unfortunately, this is the condition of 99.99% people. The identification with the mental activities is so strong that they suffer. Because of this useless kind of, it's not totally useless, but not that useful to repeat it often. Once or twice is okay. I know it's survival is an important thing in waking state. And we need to think sometimes and we need to think about the negative aspects also. Positive, we don't need to worry too much, but but repeating it again and again. Somebody insulted you last month and you are still repeating it. Not you, the mind is repeating it. And you are identifying with it. So that is unnecessary. It is not even suffering. It is like hitting yourself with hammer without any reason. When you are working, when you are doing something and with the hammer and the hammer hits your finger, it, we can understand this is natural process. It must cause suffering. It must cause pain. But if you keep hitting your hand every day <laughs> for no reason at all, then it's not wise. This is identification. So this is a trick. If it works, probably, who knows, it may work. Recall that this is not me. This is a process in the mind. This is a habit of the mind. It is programmed to, it has evolved to make this kind of noise all the time. And then leave it to make that noise. I told you it cannot be stopped. As long as there is a waking state, there will be waking memory, there will be activity of memory. Good luck stopping it. You can rise above it. You can do a little bit of fixing patchwork here and there. You can utilize nature against nature here. And you must have noticed that the past memories they tend to get overridden by more important things. Probably you had some kind of fight last year. But this year you need to go to war, let us say. There is war and you are in the army or they have actually, <laughs> like the government does, it, they make it compulsory to join the army when there is war. So you need to serve in army now. Now that little fight, even though the memory is there, it will become insignificant in front of this big major thing. And when you return from the war, if you do, there is a little chance that you can come back alive. And these memories of the war will actually totally overwrite that little fight that you had with your friend. I'm giving you a strong, an obvious example, but uh, you must have noticed that as we proceed with our day-to-day -day life, 
and the past memories they get overwritten by new incidences new things keep happening every day and the mind then recalls them instead of the old things so older the memory is the less it is recalled this one other rule you can note down the rules and note down, down the laws of the mind how it operates this is another thing to note that older it is the less often it will be recalled and there is another rule that stronger negativity gets recalled more than the weaker negativity just like in the case of war so more it will recall the latest and it will it will recall the worst <laughs> So we can actually take um, advantage of this tendency or these flaws. We can hack into it, and we can overwrite the negative memories of the past with something which we are doing right now. Sometimes they say that the time heals the wounds, the mental wounds. This is true because. the past experiences they get overwritten by something new as long as there is life something or the other will keep happening in your life and the recent events they get repeated they get recalled more frequently now and i just like i told you it does not matter whether it is happy or sad the mind will twist it into something disgusting so this one way let the time pass do not be disheartened that oh no this thing cannot be stopped and it will go on for all my life yes it will but the, the contents will change so time clears the past a little bit not totally and more intense experiences you have they will overwrite the less intense experiences so waiting for mind to forget about or to not give importance to small things in your life this is one trick another trick is to engage in something so intense that the mind gets no time at all to think about minor issues in your life i'm not saying you go to war every day no do something which is so intense which you like so much in which you are absorbed totally and it should be important it should not be merely a distraction it should be some something which is very important to you and connected to survival even if it is not survival related you can connect it to survival like earn more money or something like this and the past things will be overwritten they will fade out somewhere in this intensity the mind will recall that which is presently important i said it will be overwritten but that is not really true nothing gets overwritten simply the mind has a less preference now to recall those uh, less important it gives them less priority whatever happened in the past will be forgotten it does not mean that it will be erased from memory it means the mind won't bother you too much there is another way just like i said awareness awareness will not stop the process awareness does nothing i am pure awareness i am consciousness and i do nothing really except being conscious except being aware just watching there is no power in awareness to do anything it has no will it allows everything unconditionally whoever does is the mind it has preferences it wants to do this and that it is the experience itself the experience in motion is mind 
So what happens is that my, the awareness shines a light on the intellect, the higher layers of the mind. And you must have seen there is a delay when the mind is thinking, it goes on thinking without stopping. There is almost like a drain, it runs. As soon as there is awareness, it stops for a few seconds. And the intelligence wakes up. The higher layers, they wake up. And we get, a, we get two seconds to actually stop the train of thoughts. A fraction of the seconds. And it starts again. So you can utilize this. Uh, and again, fault in the mind. There's a back door in the mind. You can hack into it. The awareness, as soon as it shines the light, the mind stops. The intellect rises and there is the stop switch. There you can switch the mind into something else. This is also temporary. If you do it always, if you are always aware, then actually the suffering is destroyed. The mind cannot now produce a suffering. It cannot say, I am doing it because the awareness has shown you that no. It is not me, it is mind. The mind has started again. Some, some thought like this may be there, which is okay. Or you can even say, I stopped it, which is also okay, but it's not true. The mind stops itself. That is the only time where the intellect can interfere and push it to something more useful or positive. You can try. You can try to substitute positive thoughts my experience, it won't work. <laughs> it's kind of very stubborn. Positive thought is seen as artificial, fake. And the mind has, even the lower mind has this much intelligence that these thoughts are being forced on me. And I really don't want to think them, the positive thoughts. And it refuses to take the train. But uh, if you do that often, I mean, by doing, I mean the habit of becoming aware is uh, installed in the mind. And if it, uh, it does that often, then uh, suffering will be gone. The mental processes, they don't stop. You do not try to stop them. It's not really recommended. The distance from mental processes, that is possible. That is possible by being aware of the activity of the mind. Whatever it is doing, you need to be aware. There can be slips in awareness, which is also okay. Who wants to be aware 24 by 7? It is too much. You need to be aware only when the negativity goes beyond control and you can now see its effects on the body. Like The body will start shaking, the face may turn red, the temperature may rise or the body may become lethargic, it just gives up. When this happens, it means you need to, the higher layers need to intervene. The aware, it's time for awareness to take the wheel and let the awareness drive for a while. So we can get rid of suffering actually. We cannot get rid of mind. Hopefully this will uh, clear up some things for you. This will make uh, the nature of mind uh, obvious to you. And this will help the awareness a little bit. This will cause a little bit of detachment from the mental processes. And it is guaranteed that this will cure the suffering. Even if you suffer for a few minutes or even for an hour, when the awareness returns, and it will return, these words that you are hearing, they are also being impressed on your mind, on your memory, and these also will be repeated. This knowledge is forever. It will, the mind will recall it, even if you don't know, it will recall, it will see. And even if you have suffered for a few minutes or a few hours, 
in the light of this knowledge, this suffering will be seen as totally made up, a fake suffering. Actually, this awareness is so magical that uh, you will see that all this suffering that you suffered all of your life is mind created, is mental, is artificial, is fake. You will realize that you never suffered in your life. You will see the suffering as an illusion created by the mind. <laughs> Not only the past few hours you were suffering were fake, they were an illusion, they were just a process in the mind and reactions of the body and a lot of garbage is there in the mind. Not only that, whole of your suffering, all the past suffering, all the present suffering and all the future sufferings that are, that are going to come, it is, it is also guaranteed that there will be more suffering, but it will be seen in the light of this knowledge, this light of awareness. It's all fake. It's all illusion. You will never take your mind seriously again. <laughs> that is the key. I gave you the key. Don't take it seriously. Whenever there is a necessity to act, if it is a question of survival, the body acts, the mind acts, this organism, it acts, it is programmed to act since millions and millions of years. It knows best to act. And you must have noticed that when it comes to action, this repetitive process, this suffering creator is of no use. The mind is going to trash it when it comes to important jobs. So one day somebody said that, Oh, this mind, it does this thing. And I'm kind of fed up with this activity of the mind. Actually, they did not use this kind of words because these are words of a seeker, spiritual seeker. Ordinary people, they use ordinary words like, I'm fed up, I'm al always worried, I'm always uh, thinking bad and bad things happen and so on. Why is this happening? And I said, Again, the war metaphor is kind of useful here. I said, if you were in the middle, if you were in the midst of a war, you see, if bullets are showering, if they are dropping bombs on your head, everybody is dying, everybody is being shredded to pieces, the buildings are collapsing, would you get time to suffer? Would you get time to get depressed and Will there be any time or priority to engage in self-pity? <laughs> and that person was kind of shocked. Yes, it's not possible really. It is not the reality. That's why you can be free from this. The reality is present moment. Whatever is happening here, it's all perfect. If it is related to survival, it is also perfect. There is no need to think negative about it. As soon as you think negative, it is a reaction to what is happening and it is suffering. Soon the ego will rise up. The identity creator will rise up. The attachment will happen. The identification will happen. And it becomes even more deeper impression on the mind. Look, I suffered that time. It was so bad. Instead of simply suffering, it is a suffering that is kind of sprinkling salt over the wounds and when you recall it again and again it is like it never fills up it never heals so hopefully this tricks these tricks this this knowledge this awareness will get rid of the suffering forever for you it is not magic this is how awareness works this this is our real nature we do not cling to anything, really. Nothing should leave an impression on this space-like consciousness. It is very pure. It allows the experience, but it does not store the experience. And that is the job of the mind and it's all illusion. Once you realize this, once you embody this knowledge, 
suffering will say bye bye forever thank you very much for listening